Hey YouTube! Welcome to another video. In this episode, I'll show another example of how to do policy-based routing or policy routing with TP-Link Comada. If you have not seen the previous episode, please watch it first to better understand the current setup and different use cases as well as how to go to the menu options. I want to make this video short so I will not repeat things I already covered in that earlier video. Okay, so previously I covered two ways to do policy routing. The first one was based on VLAN and the second one is based on network port. And for this video, I will show you how to do policy routing based on the destination web URL. So Google, Netflix, Reddit, Amazon.com, Twitter.com. So those websites, any websites. You can use the example I'm going to show you in any target website you need to get redirected to a specific one fourth or ISP provider. Also, when you get the chance, I want to ask for your help that if you find this video or this episode helpful and useful, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to help the channel. Okay, so let's jump on with the design and configuration. So for this design, just focus on the one portion of the design. To be able to follow this video, you will need at least two ISP providers. So you need more than one ISP providers. If you have more, you can do that as well. As you can see, I have AT&T with the IP address of 69 and the other ISP provider is Comcast with the IP address of 174. By the way, if you are interested to implement this new generation LAN design, I will leave a link in the description. Okay, so let's jump in with the configuration. Okay, so in this screen, this is where we're going to create the new policy routing. You will notice that these are the old ones that we have covered in the previous episode. So we are not going to turn it on. We're not going to touch this. We'll just leave this turned off so that it doesn't interfere with the demonstration that I'm going to show you later on. To be able to do the policy routing for a target URL, the very first thing that you need to know is the website's IP address. So how do you do that? For this video, for this example, I will use IP Chicken so that I can easily demonstrate to you how the one ports are being changed from time to time every time we turn on and turn off the policy routing. I'm using a Windows OS and I'm going to use the built-in tool NSLOOKUP but there are plenty of tools that you can use on the web as well to find the IP address of your target website. So let's do NSLOOKUP, let's do ipchicken.com and there you go. These are the IP addresses that you will need to add to your policy routing. So this is the very first step. Now we can create a new routing policy for tp Comada. Okay, so let's start doing that. Create new routing, let's say ipchicken. direct okay just any protocols and then so the default ISP for this system is AT&T so that's 69 IP address and whenever I'm using IP chicken I would like Comcast to be used as the ISP provider so I'm going to use one okay and for the sake of this video demonstration I'm going to disable this only for this video okay if you're doing this on your own leave it on and again another one just for demonstration purposes I'm just going to turn it off again for your own use I highly suggest that you leave this on so that if this one is down then the other one will take over okay so that's just what it means so since our use case is that any client, any end device accessing IP chicken should use Comcast, then our source should be IP group and any IP. So any computers, whether it's tablet, mobile device, PC, laptop, so it's any IP connected to your LAN. Whether it's in the admin VLAN, whether it's in the home VLAN, doesn't matter. So long as it's going to use IP chicken, use the Comcast ISP provider for accessing that website. So that's what we're saying here. So for the destination, this is where the result of the NS lookup comes into play. So let's just call it IP chicken IP address. Okay, so let's 
let's do this. Add subnet. If you're doing this on your own, I'm not sure if IP can have CDNs. So don't just copy the IP addresses that you see here. Make sure that you run the NS lookup yourself and use that IP instead. Because sometimes if you're in a different location, they have a different service that's much closer to you. So the IP address will be different. The only thing that you need to watch out for is the IP addresses. This might change. That's the only thing that you need to watch out for. Okay, now that it's created, I have here IP chicken IP address. So I'll click create now. So currently it's disabled for demonstration purposes. Okay. And I'm going to use Firefox again for demonstration purposes. Since it's turned off, when I click IP chicken, it should show my 69 IP address. So three, two, one, go. There you go. You can see it's 69. In order for me to make sure that connection is being terminated, no cache or anything that's tingling, I usually just close off the browser and I usually wait for a while. Okay, so now I'm turning it on. So the expectation now, now that we turn it on, is that it's going to use the Comcast One ISP provider. For the Comcast, we're expecting a 174 IP address. So I'm launching Firefox again. I'll count down to 3, 2, 1, and then I'll click IP chicken. We're expecting Comcast at 174. 3, 2, 1, go. And there you go, we have 174. Close that, and you can see that it's IP chicken is enabled. So let me turn it off. Let it stew for a bit. Let the system take effect before you do another test of the redirection. Again, now that it's turned up, our expectation is that it's going to use the 69 IP, which is the AT&T. So let me try that again. Okay, so IP chicken is here. Three, two, one, go. There you go, 69. Okay. And I'm turning it back on again. This will be the last time that we'll be testing it, but just for kicks. And I'm launching Firefox again. Three, two, one, go. There you go. Okay. Let's turn it off again. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for this video. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you don't like, please give it a dislike. But do let me know what I can improve on this video. I hope you learned something. Thank you again for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you and bye-bye.